21st Precinct, Sergeant Collins. No, the captain's over there at the scene. No, I haven't heard about that yet. Who gave those instructions to the emergency trucks to go back to quarters? Well, you want to talk to the desk officer about it? Yeah, we still need the... You are by transcription in the muster room of the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right. As soon as I know anything here, I'll give you a call. Yep, just as soon as we get word. Okay. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Cronin, Vincent P. Cronin. I'm captain in command of the 21st Precinct. I was doing night duty, 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. Immediately after I turned out the platoon at 4, a call came through reporting armed robbery of a drugstore on 2nd Avenue. Then a call reported a child struck by an automobile on Park Avenue and 77th Street. Shortly afterward, two detectives of the Manhattan East Burglary Squad chased the suspect from Lexington Avenue and 86th Street to 87th and 3rd. They fired a total of five shots at him before he was finally stopped by a bullet in the leg. The patrol force and detectives in the precinct had a busy three hours as a result of these occurrences, but by 7 p.m. things had quieted down. I returned to the station house, cleaned up some paperwork, and at 8.30 p.m. went out for a meal. Things were still quiet when I returned, and sector car number two, patrolman Cole, the operator, came by the house to take me out on patrol. And that's rough, I'm telling you, Captain. Yeah, I know, I know. About six years old. So I must have knocked him 20 feet. There he was. I knelt down next to him. What do you think he did? He smiled at me. Couldn't talk, but he smiled. How do you like that? And what do I do? Like an idiot, I smile back. Yeah. Well, what else could you do, Coley? He's laying there. He's got both legs broken. Who knows what else? And he smiled. Mm. Oh, uh, who's that on the post there? Mercado? Uh, yes, sir, that's Mercado. Pull over, huh? I want to talk to him. Okay, Captain. Ricardo. Evening, Captain. Ricardo. All right, you keeping your eyes on these parked cars? Yes, sir. Well, there's been a couple of thieves working in this neighborhood tonight. I've hit two cars already. Yes, sir, I know. Sergeant Collins told me about it. All right, keep your eyes open. Take a look at all the cars on the post, see if there are any packages, you know, suitcases, clothing, the seats. Those are the ones they'll be after. Yes, sir. Oh, here hmm? comes my favorite psycho, Captain. Oh? Yeah. Hmm? He's uh, very fond of me. He won't leave me alone. Get a load of this. Officer. Officer, don't go away. Oh, I'm not going anyplace, Mrs. Shannon. You know what happened? Those spies aren't after you again, are they? Oh, no, not tonight. They haven't bothered me tonight. They haven't been following me. I guess the gorilla scared them off. A gorilla? Are you a policeman, too? Oh, of course you are. You must be a sergeant. Oh, he's the captain, Mrs. Shannon. Oh, he's the captain. Will you be interested in this? Oh, you just tell me, Mrs. Shannon. No, I want to tell the captain. Yeah, all right, all right, you can tell me. Well, I was in my apartment, and I was listening to some very nice music on the radio. And all of a sudden, there was this tremendous commotion out in the hall. I thought it was a spy. That's who I thought it was immediately. You know how they've been following me. Yes, I know, Mrs. Shannon. Well, I wasn't going to open that door for anything. Not for anything. I put my ear to the door, and I listened, and there were people talking out in the hall. I thought, sure, it was a spy. They were hollering and screaming. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden... I feel something behind me. I just feel it. And I looked around, and there, what do you think came in from the fire escape? The gorilla. How did you know? I didn't go to Fordham for nothing. Well, that's exactly who it was, the gorilla. I didn't know what to do. I was terrified. Oh, I don't blame you. There was the gorilla in my apartment and the spies out in the hall. There was no place to turn. I didn't know where to go. It was terrible. How big a gorilla was it? Oh, this big. It's tremendous. What color gorilla? Black. Captain, you have never seen such a ferocious beast in all your life. I was just standing there terrified, just terrified. Yeah, sure, but you weren't. I have never been so terrified in my whole life. I bet you were really in a pickle, all right. The girl inside, spies out in the hall. What did you do, Mrs. Shannon? How'd you get out of it? Well, I decided I could take my chances with the spies. 
I went out in the hall and I ran downstairs. I ran downstairs and I ran out in the street looking for you. Well, what did the spies do when you came out in the hall? Oh, I threw them off the track. Good girl. I said, help. There's a gorilla in my apartment. Smart. When they went to take a look at the gorilla, I ran downstairs. Now, that was pretty clever, Mrs. Sherman. I think so. Don't you, Captain? Yes. Yes, indeed. But what I want to know is what am I supposed to do? There's that gorilla in my apartment and I won't be able to get a wink of sleep tonight. I think that's awful. Will you come over and chase him out, would you please, officer? Well, now, I'll tell you what, Mrs. Shannon. Yes. Now, you see, the captain here came over to talk to me on some very important business. Now, we're making plans to get those spies here and get them good. Oh, I was wondering when you were going to do that, because they're a menace to national security. Oh, you betcha. Uh, you just go on home and go to sleep, and you let us take care of everything, eh? That's a good idea. That's fine. But what am I going to do about the gorilla? Uh, well, I'll tell you what you can do. Yes. You just walk right up to that gorilla, you look him in the eye, and you tell him you don't want to have a thing to do with him. Will he listen to me? Oh, you bet your life he will. You look him in the eye and show him you're not afraid at all. Now, if you're not afraid, he'll probably feel it. Oh, he's probably gone already. He won't be there when I go home? If you're not afraid, he won't, Mr. Shandy. All right. I won't be afraid. That's good. Now, you just go on home and go to sleep, huh? All right. Good night. Good night. Uh, oh, good night, Captain. Good night, Mrs. Shannon. Look him in the eye. I don't want to have a thing to do with you. I'm not afraid. Nice case, that one, Captain. Yeah, nice. Sure is. Those spies have been after her for about ten years. If they ever catch her, she ought to have nothing to live for. Why, I've never seen her around the station, huh? Oh, she was headed there once, but somebody told her that that's where the spies live. This gorilla routine's a new one. I never heard that before. Poor old gal. Spies alone are giving her enough trouble now. She needs a gorilla, and... Has she ever been institutionalized? Oh, yeah, Captain. She's been in and out half a dozen times. Captain? Yeah? A call just came over. Oh, hi, Danny. Hi, Bill. That was a crazy one, Captain. Uh, there's a chimpanzee loose in a building down the block here, 683. Oh, yeah? That's for the emergency squad's response. Hey, that's Mrs. Shannon's gorilla. Who's gorilla? All right, let's see what there is to it. Yes, come on, Cotto. You know something, Captain? What? I'm just beginning to wonder. Maybe those spies are the real too. Mm -hmm. As we pulled up in front of the building, sector car number one, with patrolman Dowd and Kaiser, came to a stop right behind us. The building was an old law four-story tenement. Tenants gathered on the stoop told us that there was, in fact, a chimpanzee loose in the building, and directed us to the roof where they said it was last seen. As we went up the stairs, I noticed the door of nearly every flat was open and the occupants were standing in the hall. They confirmed the story that the animal was last seen on the roof. As we reached the top floor and headed up the stairs leading to the roof. All right, let's go. Come on. Okay, yes, sir. Well, there's someone, Captain. Yeah. Yo. Oh, hi. We lost him. We don't know where he is. Have you been up here? Yeah, he's come up the fire escape again. He's been playing around on the fire escape and television aerials and clothesline poles. Now, I think he might have gone across the roof to the next building and down again. I don't know. Dad, Kaiser. Yeah. Yeah. Get over there in the next row. Put your lights down the fire escape in the courtyard. See if you can spot him. Right. We're calling. You go to the building on the other side. Do the same thing. Okay, Captain. Ricardo, you stay at the top of the stairs here. Don't let anybody on the roof who doesn't belong here. Yes, sir. And I get going. I'm telling you, if I know something like this is going to happen, I never would have agreed to take care of him. Are you, are you the owner? Oh, no, I'm not the owner. I've been watching him, though, since yesterday. Oh, where? In your apartment? No, not my apartment. The apartment next door. No, what's your name? Stafford. Carl Stafford. Mr. Strafford, don't you know it's a violation of the sanitary code to keep a wild animal uncaged in the city? Oh, he's not wild. He's tame. Well, he's not very tame if he broke away like this. Oh, I'm telling you, he's an educated champ. He's never been in a cage. He'd go wild if he ever got in a cage. He's almost human eating cows. Yeah, well, who is the owner? Uh, the girl lives next door to me. She asked me to watch him and feed him. She had a good Albany, a mother sick up there. Oh, what's the name? Yeah, just a minute. Mercado. Sir. Come here. I feel like I know where he went. This is getting awful. Okay, oh, Captain, get to him, Carter. Get your book out. Take this down. I don't want you to serve with summons in this case. Yes, sir. You see him down there? Oh, what? Now, how do you spell your name? Uh, it's Stafford. Carl Stafford. Uh, S C R A double F O R G. How do you spell your first name? With a C or with K? Oh, with C. C A R L. Mm -hmm. Where do you live, sir? Uh, next door, 671 CB. All right, you say this friend of yours left the chimp with you, right? Well, not with me, exactly. In her own place. Boy, I hate to lose him. I don't know. Somebody gives you responsibility. It's away from me. Now, what's the the name of the owner? Uh, the friend of the neighbor of mine, uh, Roberta McKelly. McKelly? Yeah, she had to go to Albany. Her mother is sick, and she asked me if I'd take care of Arthur, go in and feed him and so forth. Is that the name? Arthur? Arthur, yeah, yeah. It's Arthur. Good name. How do you spell that, McKelly? 
M A double C E double L Y. Uh, well, what was she doing with this chimp? Boy, she got an act in a carnival, see? She'd been down in Florida all winter with him and working at some show down there. I don't know. But you know, she came up to New York last week and she was going out on the road again with the carnival. And all of a sudden she got this call from Albany that her mother was sick and she didn't know what to do with him. So she asked me, would I take care of him? And I said, yeah, yeah, like a fool. I said, yes. And uh, she said he was nothing to take care of. He was a doll. She said he did anything you give him. Uh, he does. Well, what did she do? Let him just run around her flat? Yeah, yeah, sure. He, he ran around there. Yeah, good as gold, that Arthur. No kidding, boy. He's going to be rough on her. I, I mean, how's she going to get out and go out on the road without him? Huh? I'll look at him. How, how'd he get away? Well, well, when I went in before, it was warm, and like a fool, I opened the window. I don't know. All of a sudden, I looked up, and there he was gone. He's out in the fire escape. See, well, I go out in the fire escape after him, and I say, yeah, here, Arthur. Arthur, come on, Arthur, come back. And he's climbing all around, going up on the roof and down another fire escape, and finally goes into somebody's flat over there next door. That must have been Mr. Shannon. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Mr. Shannon. You know, you know, I think it was psychological, you know what I mean? Uh, well, like, uh, maybe he missed the beta and didn't know what to do, and he wasn't familiar with me, and he decided this was the time to get away. You think that could be a distinct possibility? That could be, yeah. He's as good as gold. It's, it's just like having a mature kid in the house, I'm telling you. Hello, Captain. Got him, Sergeant. Got I pulled up, there was some word down the sidewalk that he was spotted two buildings down at 677. Oh, yes? Yes, sir. I sent my operator and two emergency service patrolmen up to look through that building. All right, Sergeant, uh, ring into the communications bureau. Have them call the ASPCA or zoo someplace. Get a cage up here for this thing. Hey! Well, he's liable to be kind of wild when we get him cornered. Well, he's never been in a cage in his life. He don't know what a cage is. Well, he's going to find out tonight. Get going, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Right away, Captain. And uh, let me know about that 677. Okay, I want to listen. Maybe we better go over there ourselves. Now, I, I could talk to him. You see, I got, I got a leash here in my pocket. All I got to do is get it around his collar there. And that's all. It'll be okay. Um, let's find out first if he's definitely there. Uh, what do you call this thing? A chimpanzee? Yeah, that's right. Chimpanzee. Uh, his name's Arthur? Arthur, yeah, yeah. Boy, Roberta's going to be back in the morning. I don't know what she's going to do. She's going to hit the ceiling about this. When Arthur went out the window, her bread and butter went out the window altogether. Huh? Well, when did you say she'll be back? Well, she said the first thing in the morning, 9 o'clock, 9.30, something like that. Oh, that's good. She'll be back just in time to go down to court with you. For the next hour and 45 minutes, Martha, the errant chimpanzee, evaded all efforts to corner him. He leaped from fire escape to clothesline pole, back to another fire escape. He climbed from rear courtyard to roof and from building to building. More than 40 police officers were on the scene. Half were engaged in the animal hunt, the other half in keeping curious citizens out of the way. In addition, the fire department sent a rescue truck and hook and ladder apparatus in order to scale walls and get to roofs inaccessible from the inside of buildings. The Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals dispatched a wagon and four agents. The keeper from the Central Park Zoo arrived to assist. And two trainers from Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus, playing at Madison Square Garden, came to the scene. After participating in the chase for the entire time, I finally went down to the sidewalk to check on the number of men and the amount of equipment at the scene to determine if any of it could be returned to regular duty. As I reached the sidewalk, I spotted Carl Strafford, from whose apartment the chimp had escaped, leaning against the fender of a parked automobile. I walked over to him. Mr. Stravard. Oh, hello, Captain. How's it going? Did you get him cornered? <laughs> why is it some deal, I'm telling you? Uh, why aren't you up there helping the officers locate him? Oh, listen, I'm tired. What do you think we are? No, I mean tired. I, I, I'm up on the fire escape in 683. No sign of him, right? Eh? And somebody says, there he goes on the roof of 681. Well, I go downstairs and I go upstairs. By the time I get to the roof of 681, he's back in 683. I'm telling you, I'm tired. Well, you ought to try to be of some assistance. You know, the animal's frightened. You're the only one around here that he knows. Well, I don't know what he'd know me anymore. Let me ask you, how did they catch one of these things in a, in a natural habitat? If they can't catch a chimp running around a couple of apartment buildings. How did they catch him in the wilds of Africa, wherever they come from? I don't know, but we'll find out before this thing's over. But... Yeah, you're telling me. I'll find out a lot of things. Primarily, I'm, I'm finding out things twice before you do somebody a favor. I swear, it's the last chimpanzee I'm taking care of. I don't care who it is that asks me. Up the stairs, down the stairs, into the basement, into the courtyard. I'm telling you, I had it, and I don't care who knows it. Hello, Captain. Oh, Matt, hi. Put out a 15-state alarm? <laughs> well, don't kid me, Matt. This isn't fun. Yeah, I know. Is there anything I can do to help? No, well, doesn't seem like anything's going to help, Matt. Oh, uh, oh, this is Mr. Carl Strafford, Lieutenant Matt King. 
in charge of the 21st Detective Squad. The police are mentioned. The driver. That's the fellow the chimp got away from, Matt. He got out the window, on a fire escape. Oh, he's like lightning that on. Captain? Captain Collins. All right, Mercado. Sergeant Collins told me to come down and tell you they got him cornered up on the roof of 321. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's just sitting there in the middle of the roof. Two circus men and three officers are closing in on him. They think they'll get him. Uh, listen, you mind if I stay here? Okay, you stay. Come on, Matt. Right with you, Captain. You think they got him, Amicado? Yes, sir. He's just sitting there in the middle of the roof. Men are closing in on him. Apparently, he's just as tired as we are. I imagine. How does this guy happen to have him in his apartment? Oh, it's a long story, Matt. A friend of his, a carnival entertainer, asked him to take care of the chimp. Well, the chimp gets out the window. Sure has been a heavy day. Yeah. We had everything today. Everything and then some, Lieutenant. Captain. Yeah, I'm hiding. Sergeant Collins. Okay, we're coming up. Oh, no, 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 you don't have to. He's gone. Well, here we go again. Catching robbers is a lot easier, huh, Lieutenant? Sometimes, yeah. Uh... We thought we had him, Captain. Yeah? But we didn't. Oh, well, what happened? We were closing in on him. He was just sitting there peacefully. One of the circus men got within about three feet of him. Arthur took the biggest leap you ever saw. Headed for the edge of the roof, down the fire escape into the courtyard and away. Well, you know where he is now? We weren't able to keep our lights on. Mm -hmm. Let me know when you locate him again. Yes, sir. I'm going to get back on the roof and cut over to the next building. Yeah, you do that. Come on, Mercado. We ought to get a net to throw over him, something like that. Oh, here we go again, man. Yeah. We'll get him, Captain. Can I see what more? Oh, uh, what is it, Mrs. Shannon? I wish you'd come in here. I'd like to show you something. He's a psycho, man. Uh, well, we're kind of busy right now, Mrs. Shandon. And... I know that you're busy. I can see that, but I want to show you what I discovered. I discovered something in my apartment that's really very important. Well, uh, we have to go over next door, you know, the next building where they've seen the uh, chip and say. No. I'll talk to you later, Mrs. Shandon. I want you to come in. Now, uh, don't, don't hold on to me, Mrs. Shandon. I want you to come in just for a minute. I want to show you something. Who's this man? What's he doing here? Do you know him? Yeah, he's a policeman, too. Who is he? Where's his uniform? I don't see his uniform. Have you got a badge? He's a policeman, Mr. Shannon. You can take my word for it. Now, uh, I'd like you to let go of my sleeve. Hmm? I will if you promise to come into my apartment for just a minute. Just a minute. That's all it'll take. I want to show you something. I made a very important all right. discovery. All right. For just a minute. Good. Matt? Yes. It's about the gorilla and it's about the spies. It all fits together in a neat little pattern. A very neat little pattern. Come in, please. Now, uh, uh, what have you discovered, Mr. Shannon? Fingerprints. Fingerprints on the windowsill right where the gorilla came in from the fire escape. You see? You see them all over there? Now, what really happened is this. That gorilla isn't really a gorilla at all. It's just a spy dressed like a gorilla. One of the spies has been after me. Oh, no, no, no. I, I don't think so, Mr. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, don't tell me what's so, because I know I can tell from the fingerprints. Oh, they don't look like fingerprints to me. Oh, yes, they are. I know fingerprints when I see them. Don't tell me what looks like fingerprints. Well, this is Lieutenant King, and he's an expert on fingerprints. Now, he'll be able to tell you. Uh, no, those aren't fingerprints, Miss Shannon. Well, how can you tell without a magnifying glass? He can tell. If he's an expert, he should have a magnifying glass. Well, five carry magnifying glasses at all times. Well, how do you know that? But you said you never saw the spies. Oh, spies carry magnifying glasses. You know that. I don't have to tell you. This gorilla is just one of the spies dressed up. That's what he is. I know that's what he is, and I'm fighting, and I'm scared to death. I don't know what I'm going to do. It's terrible. They've been after me all this time, and at last they've got me. No, they haven't got you, Mrs. Shandon. We're here to protect you. I'm afraid. Now, look, why, why don't you just sit down over there? No, I don't want to sit down. Oh, you ought to. I'm too afraid. When they sit the dressing up like a gorilla and they come after me, it's time to be afraid. Now, come on, you just sit down. Over there. Oh, I'm afraid. Well, now, nobody's going to hurt you. You're going to be all right. We're going to get the gorilla, and we're going to take him away, then oh. everything will be all right, huh, Wallace? If you'd only get him. You've got to get him before you get me. We'll get him. Now, don't you worry about it. Captain. Oh, yes, Mikado. They think they've got him now that they can get a hold of him. Huh? Yeah? Where? He came down the fire escape at 675, went into a flat on the second floor. We've got men on the fire escape and men outside the door. Oh, are you going to capture him? Are you really going to capture him? Yes, I, I think so, Mrs. Shannon. I think we've got him. Oh, you don't know what a relief that is. You don't know what a load that is off my mind. Mrs. Shandon, it's going to be a load off all our minds. The scene of our operations quickly moved to 675, another old law tenement building. The chip and Z had traveled across roofs and down the fire escape. He'd entered a flat on the third floor through an open window leading from the fire escape. It was quickly determined that the tenant was not home. 
Two police officers had, officers had followed him down the fire escape and waited outside the window. On instructions from Sergeant Collins, they didn't attempt to enter and capture the animal. They remained there to guard against his escape. With the animal cornered in the flat, the ASPCA agents brought up from their truck a large portable cage. All the tenants of the building were directed to get inside their apartments and close the doors. I sent Patrolman Mercado down to the street to locate Carl Strafford, from whom the chimp had escaped. He was brought up to the third floor hall of the building where Lieutenant King and I were waiting. I hope this is it, believe me. Well, you're not the only one, Mr. Strafford. Captain, here he is. Okay, Mercado. Where is he? Which apartment? That one. Right there. He's really tearing up the joint, too. It's going to be an awful lot of damage. Oh, listen, am I responsible for the damage? You know, I don't belong to me. He belongs to this Rebeda. I just taking care of him. Well, it's not for us to say. Well, I mean, he's not mine. He don't belong to me. It's a, a civil action, Mr. Strafford. We've got nothing to do with that. All we're worried about right now is catching him. Yeah, all right. Well, now, I, look, I want just... you to remember, he don't belong to me. Now, here's what we're going to do. You see, you see where they got the cage over there right outside the door? Yeah. Now, we're going to open up the cage with the gate standing right straight up. Uh-huh. We're going to move it flush up against the door. Yes. We're going to take the key, open up the door. Well, how are you going to get the key? I sent an officer to get the superintendent to get a pass key. Oh, wow. Now, you're the only one this chip is familiar with. Everything will be very quiet. As soon as the door is open, you'll stand all right there behind the cage. You, uh, you call to him. Huh. We'll see if we can get him to come toward the door. If he comes toward the door and starts out, he walk right into the cage. If he walks into the cage, we'll snap the gate right now. Well, it'd be beautiful if it works. Well, if it doesn't work, we'll have to try something else. We'll have the men on the fire escape make a lot of noise. Maybe they can scare them toward the door and into the cage. Is that that doesn't work? Well, then we'll just have to go in there after them. Well, all right, whatever you say. I've got the key from the super, Captain. Okay. He wanted to come up here, but I told him he'd better stay down there below. Yeah, that's a good idea. Now listen, Captain, if that cage is strong enough to hold this fellow on top of it, I think it'd be better. He'd be closer and more likely to attract him. Yeah, that's a good idea, man. You fellas all set with a cage? Yeah, they're all set. Well, all right, Captain. Let's, let's try it, man. Come on, Carl. Oh, man, this is something. I never want to go through anything like this again. You know what? Well, this is the fellow here he got away from calling. Oh, yeah? Think that cage going to be strong enough let him stand on top of it? Oh, sure, it's strong. Now, when that door gets open, you call to him very gently. See if he'll come over here and into the cage. All right, I'll try. All right. Up you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh. All right, now, right up. talk to him gently. See if he can coax him over here. You know, call him by name. Hmm? I got some of the bananas here that we had up on the roof. Maybe that'll help. Oh, he likes bananas. All right, all right, try one. Yeah. yeah. All right, set. As soon as I feel this banana. Yeah. Okay, quiet, quiet in the hall now. Keep it down. Stay quiet. Okay, here's the key. Yes, sir. Arthur. Come on, Arthur. Come on, Arthur. It's me. It's, it's Carl, Arthur. Come on, boy. That's a good monkey. C come on, Arthur. I got a banana for you. No, I'm over here. Over here, Arthur. Come on, boy. Come on. You don't listen to me. Keep trying. Come on, Arthur, boy. It's a nice banana for you. You love bananas, Arthur. Come to Carl, Arthur. Come on. Come on, Roberto will be home tomorrow, and everything's going to be all right, Arthur. That's it, Arthur. Look, I got a banana. Come on, don't be afraid. Come on, Arthur. That's it. Come on, that's a good boy. Nice ripe banana, Arthur. Nice ripe banana, that's it. I'm not going to hate you. Come on. A little bit more. Come on. Here you are, boy. Slam it. Go! Lock it! All right, he's all right. Oh, boy, I didn't think he was going to come. I didn't think so. All right, let's move it over here out of the way, huh? Get it over there. Back up there. I want to get it through that way. Here we go. That's it. That's all right. Okay. Right here's good. Yeah, that was a good night's work. Oh, uh, I'm ashamed of you. Uh, really, I'm ashamed of you. You're supposed to be a trained chimp. You're almost human. And look what you did. Look at the trouble you caused. Let's man. see what damage he did in there, man. I'm ashamed of you. Just ashamed of yeah, you. Yeah, I got it. I'm not going to explain this to the beta. What's she going to do? Boy, you really tore up this place. Yeah. Captain, everything okay? You got him? Yeah. Well, come in this way. Uh, go on up the fire escape in the roof. Tell them in up there we got him. Everything's okay. There's no patrol. All right, Captain. Look, he was even in the drawers. He was every place. <laughs> Stuff all over. The guy that lives here is going to be mad, and I don't think I blame him. 
papers all over the place. Mm. Uh, I'll get somebody to help get some of this up. Okay, man. Captain, hmm? look at this. Oh. Ah. Mm, how do you like that? All of them. And today's scratch sheets. Yeah. The fellow who lives here is going to be more surprised than I thought. He's going to come home and find out that he's about to do some time on the island. This guy's been booking horses. Mm, it's been a long time. I'll call the vision, Matt, and get the plane closeman up here. Let them take a look around. Gonna be a pretty good collar. <laughs> what are you gonna do with the monkey? I don't know. I haven't even thought about that. I'm not worried about catching. Well, he did such a good job here. I was thinking maybe I can have him made a detective and signed to the 21st Squad. 21st Precinct transcribed a factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the police department, City of New York. James Gregory in the role of Captain Cronin, Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King. Featured in tonight's cast were Alan Hewitt, Jack Edwards, Stacey Harris, Jeanette Nolan, and Hans Conried. 21st Precinct is written, produced, and directed by Stanley Niss. Dan Coverley speaking.